Uh, in this video, I'll show you how we can uh, use AWS code commit and AWS code build uh, to build our application or to set up a continuous integration using these two services. AWS code, some code commit is basically a remote repository, a remote Git repository hosted on AWS cloud. So the very first thing that I need is AWS account. I have created AWS account and this is my IAM user called Mahindra. And if you want to know more about it, let me open my AWS console in a new tab and let's go to IAM. You need to do few things here. Like for example, go to the IAM panel and make sure that your uh, IAM user need to have the valid permissions or uh, policies that will authorize that user to use AWS code commit. My current username is Mahindra and uh, for this user, let me check the policies here. Policies applied here. Wait a second. My access keys are already generated, that's fine. And in the permission tab, there is one permission that you need to grant or you need to add which is AWS code commit power user. You can use this button to add this permission. Then from security credentials, you are supposed to create or copy the access keys that you will use with AWS uh, CLI. And along with that, you also need to, you know, generate the credentials for your uh, HTTP credentials for your Git command line. I have already generated them, but if you want to generate a new one, you can generate them from here by using this link. When you download them or when you generate them, there is an option to download the credentials for later access. What I will do now, I already have the credentials and everything. So let's go to this and create a new code repository. I'm going to call it CI Servlet Demo. That's the repository I'm going to use. Okay, so this is basically an example of continuous integration for a Java project. Java web application project. A very simple, small Java based web application. It's not even using any kind of database there. I just want to enable Amazon Code Guru Reviewer called Java or Python. This project is Java, so it is applicable to me. Let's click Create button and this will create the new repository. You will notice this repository is right now empty. There is nothing inside the repository. So, what I should do now? Let's clone this repository to my local machine. I need to have the to get credentials ready. I already have created them. Let's copy this URL. This is my private Git repository URL. And uh, somewhere here, let me just uh, go to my... Wait a second. Let's open a new tab. Okay. And here I'll just go to my repos folder or sources folder. And let's create... Or let's clone this repository here. So, get clone, code commit. Yeah, it will now get cloned. But it should ask me for the username and password. This time it didn't ask me because I already have configured that sometime back. Okay. So now that it is already configured, what I will do now, uh, let's get inside the repository here, which is empty. If you try this status, it's an empty repository. Let's change the branch name. Uh, right now my branch name is uh, master branch. I don't want master branch. I want branch name to be main branch. Wait, wait, wait. What is happening now? This status is empty. Okay, fine. I cannot change it because there is no commit made as of now. No worries. We'll do that. What I will do is I will just copy some sample code from here. I already have code here in my repository. Uh, another Git repository, CI sublet table. And I'm going to move everything from here. So let's do an X copy, hyphen S, and here I'm going to just, you know, kind of copy and paste it to my C drive, users, Mahindra, sources, and then CI sublet table. I'm just going to copy everything from this folder to this folder. Okay, and now here, if I do dir, you can see there are some contents in here. So let's do a git add. Add all the files and then make a commit. This is my sample project. I can now change my branch name from master to main. 
you will notice my prompt has changed from master to main. Fine. Just to confirm that, let me try get status. Yes, I'm on a correct prompt. Let's push it to the AWS code. Uh, wait a second. This is the first commit. I should use hyphen u origin main. So upstream changes. I'm uploading them now. Fine. Let's go back and check the repository once again. You can reload the same page and uh, instead of showing all that help messages, it's now showing me the content of this project. This is the Git repository I was talking about. Fine. Now that it, this thing is ready, I'll do one thing. I will now go with build. Let's create a build project for this repository. I'll create a new build, creating a new build project. And here, let me call it CI demo. Okay. Java application. And I don't want this project to have more than one concurrent build. Source control, it's code commit. This is the repository name. I want to use the master branch here or main branch here. So I'll choose main branch. And for operating system, I'm going to or I'm planning to use Ubuntu based build agent. Runtime standard version 2.5.0, the latest one. Environment is Linux environment. Always use the latest, latest image for this one. That's fine. Role will be created automatically. And now the build. We need to create a new build specification file. So let's switch to the editor mode and let's define it here. I don't have any environment variables, so let me just remove all that. And directly in phases, we will enable the install phase. Now what we need to have installed on this machine, let me show you what all things need to be installed. First of all, you need to have Java installed in this machine. So which version of Java I want? I want Java Coreto 8. Okay, I will use this. Okay, Coreto 8 is the JDK version which is available to me. Okay, in here. For this. <coughs> Sorry. O C O R R E T T O or E T T O that's fine. Or I can use eleven version also, that's fine. Now there is no other commands, there is no pre-build, or I can just include some command in pre-build. Anyways, uh let's add a command in pre-build to just validate my event project. So MVN validate command will validate project. Then in actual build, my command would be command to build this project would be mvn package command. This will just run the standard maven package build uh, process. Okay. If there are any reports available, if your application includes any uh, JUnit test cases, those reports can be collected here. But right now I don't have any reports. Let's collect the artifacts instead. For artifacts, I will provide the location here. The location that I'm going to provide here is target slash star dot var. Or for this application, it's going to be root dot var. So I will just mention that. Name of the artifact. The main artifact should be named with this name. It should be called name. Name, date, year, month, and date. That will be used as a date. Looks like there is some problem with it. This indentation, I guess, is not correct. This should be on this level. Okay. The files parameter and the name parameter are siblings. And discard path, I don't want to discard any path. I want to retain them. Fine. No caching, nothing. Fine, so this is my, this is my build specification file now. And now that my build specification file is ready, I'll just go and define the artifacts here. For artifacts, I'm using a pre-created Amazon S3 bucket, build output 0123. This is where it will be kept. And the file name should be artifacts. Fine, everything is set already. No archiving required. CloudWatch, I will just add the group name. Let's call it build logs. 
and rest everything is just fine. Let's go ahead and create the build project. Now this particular build project will help me build this sample Java based map based Java project. Now let's wait for it. Project is getting created. Now once project is created, I can now either just to verify all the project configuration or just let's try one build. Okay, I have launched the build process and now it will just you know, build everything. Looks like the request has been submitted, added to a build queue and now it will do the provisioning. Provisioning is where it will actually create an Ubuntu machine with uh, Java Core 8 version installed on it. Okay, and then it will download my source code into that temporary machine and then start the next process which is build. Now this process is going to take some time. Okay. Looks like it has gone through all these phases now. It has done the build and now the only option left is uploading the artifact. But I guess there is a problem with upload artifact here. Okay. Fine. The region US East 1 is wrong. Expecting AP South 1. Okay, I got it. Probably this is because I am using I am using a S3 bucket which is at a, a different region than my code build project. That should be the reason for it. Anyways, let's just check the overall uh, uh, build configuration once. Or I'll do one thing. In the same region, I will open S3 in the same region. Let's create S3 bucket in this region only and I'll use that new S3 bucket in my code build pipeline. Just give me a minute. Okay, now I'm in S3 management console and let's create a new bucket. This is the one that I had created earlier and you will see the bucket build output 0, 1, 2, 3. It is showing some contained for pipeline 2. So, okay, this is some uh, build a log or something it has to okay, no. I'll do one thing, I'll create a new bucket instead. Create a bucket. Sorry. Let's cancel this. Create a bucket. And this time the bucket I'm going to create here is in North Virginia. US East one. Fine. Let's call it my builds. And instead of AP South, I want to use East US. Ownership disabled. Rest everything is just fine. I'll just create a bucket. Now that bucket is getting created, once bucket is created successfully, I will just change my project now. Let's go back, go back, go back, go back to the build project. Yeah. From AWS Developer Tools, I'll go to build project. And from build project, let us now make some changes to it. I'm editing the Wait a second. Let me check if I can edit that back from here. Yeah. Instead of this, I want to use my build 0123 as an artifact. So I've changed something. Let me update. And now once it is updated, let's launch a new build process. Start build. And wait for it now. Should not take much more than two seconds. Okay. Let's see, it is already submitted the request. Request is now in a queue and it will now start provisioning in any Provisioning should not take much more time now. Last time when I tried it was actually completed in just 7 or 6 seconds. Yeah, it's done now. I guess it is now installing the necessary software that is Java Code to it. Rebuild. Rebuild I, I had written nothing inside. It's just the validate command and then build. And completed. Yeah, that's good now. Everything is completed. I can check the build logs from here. You can just use kill logs and it will show you just the last few lines of your build. So looks like it has successfully built my project. So let me do one thing now. Let's see where are my artifacts. Build artifacts that is. So build details. This was the environment and this is the artifact. Let me now go to this artifact here. Let's see what artifact it has generated. From S3 management console, it will now show me what artifact it has generated. In my build 0123, 
Okay, there is an artifact here and uh, target is the folder name and inside that the file name is root.wat. Now it has preserved the path because I told it to preserve path otherwise it, it would have created just root.wat. And now this root.wat is my standard application. <coughs> I can probably use code deploy to deploy this later to the Okay, that's it for this video now.